It's a blessing to be here. Amen. Amen. I'm the. I have the task today. Yes. It's good to to uh, be able to share the word of God in Portuguese. Yes. But sometimes I have to do in English. <laughs> And it's good. So you pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. So we, we've been uh, learning about prayer the last few weeks. And uh, last week, Pastor Ron spoke about the power of prayer. And we have been praying and we have been asking God to enable us to reach out those uh, that are not saved yet. Um, and as a pastor, I have met with many pastors um, weekly and sometimes even more than once a week. And it seems like um, to be a common sense that we are living in a time of a terrible spiritual drought. This, this is not only among the pastors, but when you talk to people, especially I think in our region here in our area, uh, everyone will agree that uh, we are living in a spiritual drought. Churches have planned many kinds of programs, uh, campaigns, attractions, and etc., etc. In an attempt to attract more people to fill out the, the uh, empty spaces in the church and try to attract people that are unserved or unsaved. Uh, I believe that um, we, we can have many forms of evangelism. We can vary the f forms of evangelism according to the times and ages uh, that the church have lived. But if there is one thing that I know and that we have learned here so many times, and I think this is the base of our ministry here, is go, therefore, and make disciples. We, we have uh, this verse in our wall. So, to be honest, I don't know how the the modern church has translated this message of Jesus. I know how the, the, the early church translated, and I know how many other Christians during the, the ages have translated it. But I don't know how we, as modern church, as today church, have, uh, or ha have translated it. Um, we could say many things that discourage us. We could say, and I could say many things that will, will frustrate ourselves when it, we talk about evangelism. Because I know that uh, although this is the, the first commandment or the biggest commandment when Jesus left us, it seems to be one of the most difficult commandments to accomplish. Um, but this morning, uh, rather than bringing this uh, hard exhortation message to the church, as usual, I want to encourage us. I want to leave this place today encouraged with the Word of God. I know God has many things in storage for us. I know that he wants to use his church. I, want, I know that this is the time, I could say the momentum that we are living, that we can be used and we can accomplish greater things to the Lord, to the kingdom. Not to one church, not to one denomination, but to the kingdom of God. I know that God has many things to do. And I have been praying for souls. We have been praying for salvation. If you uh, follow me in any prayer meeting that I am, if you are here in our prayer meetings, you will know that my deepest concern and my deepest uh, request 
For our God is save, Lord. Save souls. Bring us to a place where we will reach out people and bring them to salvation. Um, I, I can't understand and I can't stand to the common sense here in this area that it is difficult. Pastor Ron has told us already, uh, we often time, times will say it is difficult. People are hard. Portuguese people are difficult. <laughs> They are Catholic, they are this, they, and we find ways to explain our bad results. Let's say this way, let's put this way. And I'm not uh, criticizing in any way, I'm just saying the church as a, a whole body. I, we find excuses and, and we can't, we can't keep going on this uh, same message that we listen to, we hear to, and we keep saying, repeating it. It is difficult. Oh, Portuguese people, they are, they are. I'm not, I'm not, no, uh, George and I had the opportunity to go to a visit on Friday in the hospital. This man, 86 years old man, and I've been sharing with him, and George saw his, his a face of concern, but for some reason the pride or something, they, they are very uh, difficult. There are so many um, tradition inside people that they don't want to uh, say. That he would say, you're right, I know you're right, but do you want me to pray for you? Well, uh, you know. And we, we know that sometimes it's hard because this is not something just for the mind. This is a spiritual battle, battle that we have to go through. And we can't win this battle without prayer. And we have been learning about prayer. We have been learning about the power that the Holy Spirit can give us if we allow Him to work in ourselves. But... I have been suffering this last uh, six years, six years now, yesterday, that I'm in the United States. So praise the Lord, He has been faithful to us. Uh, I have been suffering. I'm used to a place where we would preach and people would come and receive the Lord and stay in the church. And here, it's like you have to... You know, it's, it's hard. If I compare, it's hard. But I, I think God is telling me and telling you all the same that Paul told Titus. For this reason, I left you in Crete. For this reason, I brought you to Fall River. For this reason, you are here in Fall River, Master Builder. For this reason, you are here because I know things can be hard, but I have prepared you. You know, we have received the word of the Lord. We have learned. Now, what we have to do? What do I do? So... I, I want to talk a little bit about today, or a, lit, a little bit about something that will encourage us today. In Genesis chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26, there is a story, and it's a very well-known story, but I want just to go through a few verses to be able to share what is in my heart today. Verse 1 says, there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Or Gerar? Gerar? Gerar. That doesn't matter the place. <laughs> the name. Well, we... We always, as church, think, or persons, we always think we can figure out the ways for our lives. 
we face difficulties, we face troubles in our lives, and we, we are smart enough to figure it out. Isaac was smart enough to figure it out. He was facing a famine in his land, and he went to a very good place to be, the enemy's land. And he went to that place, and, but his heart wasn't to be there. His heart was to go down to another place. He was passing through. And sometimes God wants us to hear Him, to listen to Him. And He moves us in a way that He will change our position. He will change our thoughts. He will change what we are planning. Isaac had a plan. God had another plan. And I want to use this verse today and a couple more uh, verses just to encourage us because there was a famine in the land and I can say there is a famine in this land. There was a problem in that land and there is a problem in this land. We are living in this time of famine. We are living in this time of drought. We are living in this time of dryness. When we talk to pastors, when we talk to people in other places from New England, they will say the same. And some of them are very hard to say that we are living in maybe the last times of the church on earth. Maybe we are facing one of the most difficult times of the United States history since it was stated as a country. This country was founded in and on Bible principles. And we say amen. But today we are not on Bible principles anymore. We are not living in Bible principles anymore. What happened? And I told you I don't want to be critique or, or say uh, things that is going to or are going to discourage you. But what happened to the church? What happened to the gospel that was brought to this place? We know the history. You know better than I do. They came here to have freedom, to praise, to worship the Lord. And today, this freedom is almost gone. We are living in a freedom that maybe in a few years we will not have anymore. But there are many things that can cause dryness to a land. There are many things that can bring famine to a land. And I could say, and I'm, I'm talking spiritually, of course. And I could say pride. I could say self-righteousness. I could say self-sufficiency. I could say sins not confessed. I could say so many things about the drought of the land. They are almost... Uh, un there is a, a list, almost unending. The fact is that we are going through drought right now. And what can we do? Well, I listed a few things that we can do according to these verses. First thing, listen to the Lord. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, the Lord has been spoken here. Every time that you come to the church, open your heart to hear the Lord, to listen to the Word of God. God uses His Word. God uses His servant to speak to our hearts. In times of dryness, we can't take any step without listening to the Lord. This is the time that the church cannot take steps by its own. The church cannot say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You can't say that. This is a time that the church has to be wise. 
The text says that Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gadar. Isaac took this step by himself. He didn't ask the Lord. There was famine and he decided to go. Isaac went to the land of the enemy. When the famine comes, we tend to be lost. Although we don't think so. Especially who were re raised here in a very prosperous uh, nation. We always think we have the answer for everything. We have everything. If I ask, if you go out and ask anyone, I don't want to say here inside the church, I'm going to say out. If you ask anyone outside of the church, what do they want? They will say money. All of us, of course. <coughs> they will say money. No one is looking for wisdom, no one is looking for knowledge, no one is looking for God. We are looking for ways to make more money. We learn that we have to make money. So, we, I think we are lost as a nation. I think we are lost, especially because we never lack nothing. We have everything we need. So we think we know the next step. But we have lived for so long without consulting the Lord as nation that we imagine we can do it by our own strength or knowledge. And this is what happened to Isaac. He thought he could go anywhere he wanted, do whatever he wanted, and he was wrong. He planned going to Egypt. He planned going to a place where he was not supposed to go. His intention wasn't right. God's plan comes first to our lives. Remember this, God's plan comes first to our lives. Don't, doesn't matter how you have planned. God's plan will always be accomplished because simply because he's God and if you want to avoid changing your plans you better ask him first before you make your plans listen to the Lord listen to his word listen to what he says to us Isaiah uh, described this very well when he was prophesying, he said in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Why don't we listen to the Lord? Why don't we pay attention to what he has to say to us? Let me go on. Second, obey him. I listen to him. I know what is right. You have come to the church to know the truth. You know the word of God. Now it's time to obey. Because that's in verse 2 of uh, chapter 26 says, Then the Lord appeared to him, Isaac, and said, Do not go down to Egypt, live in the land of which I shall tell you. So God appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. And the Bible is telling us, Do not. Go this way, go this way, go this way. And sometimes uh, we, we try not to, or we tend not to obey. It doesn't happen here, but some, some other places we, we hear uh, pastors uh, saying that uh, people ask for counsel and then they do everything the opposite. So it doesn't happen here, not with me, not Pastor Ron. Uh, we know that here people are very obedient and very 
conscious. So, the church, the church, I'm not saying here, please, the church as a whole seems to be dry. The services are not that attractive anymore. There are so many other things that we could be doing right now. Sports, beach, trips to, the, to other places, so many other interesting things. And of course, everyone has to, to travel, to visit. But I, I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm just saying that these are possibilities. This is what people, or many people, have decided to do. And it's not a vacation only. It's a um, priority. The problem is the priority of people. What we have placed in first place in our lives. Because sometimes, and, and I'm going to speak about soccer. Uh, people don't go or don't come to the church because Brazilians love soccer. Portuguese love soccer. And I know Americans doesn't love football, basketball, all these balls and baseballs, and uh, you don't. You will never miss a service because of a game. I know that. But this happens in other places. <laughs> they have chosen to be in any other place. When the things seem to be unattractive for us, we tend to move. The problem is we don't consult the Lord to move. Isaac didn't consult the Lord to move. Egypt represents the world and all its attractions. We know this in the Bible. Egypt represents represents what we have out there, what we can do out there. In times of spiritual famine, what are you going to do in the church if we can have so much more fun in Egypt? Why would I stay here if there are so many fun things that I can do out there? I can sow in Egypt and reap so much more then stay here and live by faith. Many have backslidden because of the famine. And, and I'm not blaming you. And I'm not blaming the church as a body only. I'm blaming the church as leaders also. Because so many people are starving in the church. Why there is a starvation in the church? Why there is lack or there are lack of word in the church? It's not our case. But so many places, and I'm not criticizing other churches, I'm saying as a whole, so many people are going to the church and starving. So they are looking for something in Egypt. Because they are not finding here. But we can praise the Lord. Because here we have food. Here we have bread. Here we can call Bethlehem the house of the bread. God has given us a word. God has given us his word. So we, we placed in our minds... We listen to and we place in our minds that we can't have people being saved. Sometimes someone will bring some, sometimes someone will visit, but sometimes we, we just can't. The drought in the land is so tangible that many have moved to places that they can do something else. What about us? And, and I know that you're not moving. I know, praise the Lord, we are not moving. 
Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Do not go down to Egypt. Do not leave the place you are. I don't know about your thoughts, but I feel really strong in my heart that maybe someone wants to abandon the faith. If you're here today, and I believe you are, I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit, don't move. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave the place you are. Don't go down to Egypt. Do not abandon your faith. Do not move. God has a plan for you and He wants to prosper you and us in the dry land. It's time to obey. It's time to listen and obey the Lord. It's time to live in the land of which He is telling us to live. Do not give up. But what can I do, Pastor? Take an action. God appeared to Isaac and said, Do not move. Do not move. Stay here. Stay in the lands that I'm going to tell you to stay. And he stayed. And then, because he was there, he said, Oh, this land is dry. I'm not going to do anything because you know the government will provide to me. And this, it doesn't happen here. But uh, everything that is going on, I'm not going to do anything. Isaac, the Bible says in verse 12, you can follow with me. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Then Isaac sowed in the land. What land? The dry land. What land? The land was dry. In people's mind, I think they were looking to Isaac and saying, this guy must be crazy. No one sows in dry land. We, we, maybe we are not used to agriculture, but we, can, we have some knowledge. We know that we have to prepare the soil. And we know that one of the most important part of the preparation is irrigation. Is to wet the land, to bring water to the land. But there was no water. The land was dry. So, I believe Isaac had learned something about faith with his father. I believe he had learned, learned something about faith with his father. And because of that, he was confident in something. And we lack this confidence that the Lord is with us. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with us. He promised it's not a matter of you believing or not. He promised that He would be with you. You can say there is no sun, but the sun is out there. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. God is with us. He is Emmanuel. He promised, I will be with you all the days of your life until the end of the ages. So why not, or why we do not believe, or why we do not act as we are believing, or as we believe? So what do I mean to take action? It's time to sow. The land can be dry. Things can look like we, we, we are crazy. But it's time to sow. It's time to obey the Lord. It's time to win souls for the kingdom of God. It's time to be bold and preach about the love of God. We keep saying Portuguese people. I, I keep saying Portuguese people are difficult. Portuguese people are this. Portuguese. Oh, these people. Oh, they are. And we don't do. It's time to go out there. We may be living in a time of famine. 
But if we do not sow, how will we reap? And I had to be very, to separate the words or I wouldn't be able to speak these words. How will we reap? If the church keeps the mindset of auto-preservation, auto we will end self-destroyed. We don't have to live in the auto-preservation mode. We have to live in the uh, ongoing mode. Go, go, go therefore, go therefore and make disciples. This is what the Lord wants us to do. Romans 10. Paul wrote in the verse 13 to 15, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom, in they, whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So, here I am today, this half bold Brazilian pastor. <laughs> inviting you God is saying just as he said to Isaiah whom shall I send whom shall I send here I am saying as I said a few years ago send me O Lord send me O Lord I want to go my deepest desire is to see people getting saved. We love to have new people in the church, especially when they come from another church already discipled and don't give us any kind of problem. <laughs> But we are, we are so closed in our four walls that when we have a drug addict, when we have a An alcoholic, when we have someone that will give us problem and will, give, will bring us to our, our knees to pray and to ask God to, to bring transformation and ask God that we want to win this spiritual battle. Sometimes we find excuses. And I'm saying we because we are all like that. It's time for us to be bold. It's time for us to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. I want to preach for anyone. Jesus. Matthew 9, 36 to 38. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The Apostle Paul said, for, I, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, who is me if I do not preach the gospel? As Christians, we should all be like that. What is going to be of me if I don't preach the gospel? I have to speak. I have to live. We have learned here how to walk, how to be an example. In our first principle classes, we learn all how to be examples, how to attract people through our lives. But when it comes to the time of speaking and when it comes to the time of uh, sharing or, or saying them something, sometimes we lose opportunity. 
People will come to us, oh, my mom is sick. She's dying. Oh, my father is this. My, we have opportunities every day. And I know many of you have taken the chance and, and, and uh, shared the gospel. But sometimes we lack in sharing. The results of obeying, and I want to be fast here, is in the same verse, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Verse 12, Genesis 26, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. God wants to give us a great harvest. I believe Isaac wasn't expecting that. I believe he sowed using his faith that God would sustain him until the things get better. And this is how we do. Oh, it's difficult. There is a famine, but we're going to pray and God will make us go through. We will make the other side. Oh, it's going to be hard, but we will make it to the other side. Maybe he thought like that. But because he obeyed the Lord, because he was bold enough to sow, I go back to Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. My plans are not your plans, says the Lord. You just have to obey, you just have to listen to me. And if you do that, the result is up to me. We are not here to decide who are, who is going to be saved. We are not here to choose who we are going to preach for. We are here to sow. So I believe it's time to sow. I believe there is a great harvest waiting for this church in this place. I believe that we need just to follow Jesus' commandment and go. If we go. And if we bring them here, you can be pretty sure that they will be discipled. Amen. I'm pretty sure they will. You have been discipled. I have been discipled. We have been discipled here. We just need to go there and bring them. Bring them. Be bold enough to do. Listen, it's not our work. We, we tend, we, sometimes we are so judgmental. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to say to this one, oh no, this one, no, no. We choose who we are going to share the gospel. God wants us to bless us with new souls. God wants to bless us with salvation. God wants to bless us with new people, with unsaved people being brought to His presence. He wants us to use our lives to the purpose of His kingdom. The verse 13, or, or even the verse 12, he, uh, the, the word says, And the Lord blessed him. God wants to bless us. God wants to give us results. We have this assurance. There is no bigger blessing than, than being able to work for God's kingdom. I've read already how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. The Lord has many spiritual blessings for us. Yesterday, I, someone shared a video with me, and this pastor was saying, and he, he was quoting uh, when Jesus sent the 70, heal the sick. Jesus didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. In Mark he said and we will lay hands on them and they will be healed. And he asked what makes us think that we are able to do this task? What makes God, Jesus, think that we are able to? He didn't say pray. He said heal the sick. And we think it's impossible. And the other things in our spiritual life are impossible too. If we are not strengthened and if we are, we are not empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is not your battle. 
This is not my battle. This is the Holy Spirit's work. Jesus said that no one can confess Him as Savior apart from the Holy Spirit. Our work is to sow and God is going to bless our work. God is going to bless our seed. So we can't be only waiting for people. We have to go out for people. And it's the church uh, rule. I remember the first time I preached here in English. Oh, um, Our brother Harvey was sitting here and he was correcting my accent and my word. Actually words. All of them were wrong. I don't know even if they understood one third of what I said. But I was trying to say something and I, I would say, ship, don't generate ship. And people were looking to me and I, I was trying to say sheep. Sheep generate sheep. <laughs> Pastors don't generate sheep. As sheep, we, gener we, we, we will give birth to other sheep. But as pastors, the church cannot think or expect only pastors to evangelize. Sheep are to generate sheep. Sheep are to give birth to sheep, not pastors. Pastors are to care for sheep, are to uh, nurture them, are to uh, give them the way, to lead them to, through the way. As sheep, we have to do the same as you. But it's not our role only. We as church have to go out, have to make disciples. God's, God wants to prosper us. Verse 13, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Let me say one, I'm, I'm finishing here. Just one thing. Do you know why we are not more prosperous? Because we didn't do the first time. I think when Isaac had his mindset to, God is going to make me go through this and it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to sow a little bit here just to see if it's going to work. And, but then God gave him hundredfold. Oh, it works. Let me do again. And he did again, and he did again, and he did again. It is, it is an ongoing process. It's not a, a stopping process. It is something that we have to keep going, keep doing. I'm going to prosper you, says the Lord. The Lord wants us to reach the unreached, save the unsaved, heal the, the sick, spell out the demons. God wants us to do His works this morning, every Sunday morning. When we are finishing prayer, Pastor Ron will preach, God, let us be your hands, let us be your feet, let us be sensitive to others' feelings. As church, we should pray this every day. Let us be your hands. If we are God's hands, I'm pretty sure that when you lay your hand on someone, miracles will happen. And you just have to try. So, so, and you're going to reap hundredfold. Amen? Amen? God bless you. Do you want to minister the... Can I... All right, so let us pray and I will ask the ushers to pass the communion. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I praise you, Lord, and I thank you because you have taught us. You have showed us, shown us the, the way. You have shown us how to do. You have given us a commandment to go, therefore, and make disciples. And sometimes we, we are so busy in our lives. We are so uh, distracted, even us as ministers, with the uh, work of the ministry that we forget the God of the ministry. 
and we forget the commandments of what the Lord of the ministry has told us to do. Lord, we want to obey. We want to be doing your way. We want to be listening to what you have to us. And you have left to us your word. You have said that you are with us. And all authority has been given to you on earth and in heaven. Lord, so we just want to learn how to uh, embody or how to experience this authority that you have. And through your Holy Spirit, you have empowered your church. Lord, just make us understand how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Lord, I want to thank you today. I want to thank you for all those that you brought here. Lord, thank you for your word and thank you, Lord, for this moment of communion. We are doing this, oh Lord, in obeying your commandments. Don't let us be just Christians inside four walls. Don't let us be just Christians inside a church, just Sunday Christians, but help us to be better Christians every day. Help us to serve. Help us to love. Oh Lord, this is my prayer. Give us again and put in our hearts again the flame and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Put in our hearts, oh Lord, the love that you had for us and that you have for us. Help us to see those outside with your eyes. And help us, O oh Lord, to be able to reach them out. Give us a point of contact. Give us the opportunity, O oh Lord, and to, to, to have uh, those moments when you prepare and we are able to share your gospel. Lord, I pray that you're going to put in every life here today an opportunity during this week to share your love. Lord, just give boldness to everyone here to be able to share your love, to be able to pray for someone, to be able to declare your love to someone. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Lord, now I, I want to pray for this communion. Your, you said that this is your body. And we believe, O oh Lord, that it represents your body. And you said you told us to do this in remembrance of you every time that we would be together sharing communion. Lord, I pray for this element, the bread, that represents your body. I pray, Lord, that it will bring strength to our lives, spiritual strength, that will make us remember what you have done for us on that cross. You died to give us life. You died to give us salvation. And we thank you for the salvation. And as you saved us, you loved the whole world and you died for the whole world so we just have to go out and bring your chosen one to be with us thank you Lord for the opportunity that you give us to have communion together in Jesus name I pray for this bread amen we can have the bread Likewise, you, you had the cup and you said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Lord, you have brought us peace that overpasses all understanding. Through your blood, we were forgiven. Through your, your blood, we were washed. Our sins were washed away. Through your blood, 
we were brought into your family. And now, Lord, I want to pray that if there is someone here today with the heavy load of the sin, you may forgive us, Lord. I pray for forgiveness. I take this time to pray for forgiveness for all the sins that this nation and all the nations have committed against you. Lord, forgive us. Forgive your church for being so, so uh, inside for all walls. So confined inside for walls. Lord, forgive us not to believe in sometimes that you are able to transform even the hardest situation. Lord, forgive us. Give us, O oh Lord, a new time, not a new wor word, because your word is the truth. We don't need a new word. We need a new time in our lives that, that we will stand up in boldness and do your, your will. Lord, I pray for this element, and I pray <coughs> that through this, this wine, we will walk bold, in boldness, during this next month, or until you come. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to minister to your people. If they didn't understand everything, your Holy Spirit will help them to understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.